Well, welcome to another FTC workshop brought to you by the Nerds of the North. So this FTC workshop will be about outreach and some topics that will include are going to be about tracking outreach data, how to present team outreach to judges and what outreach opportunities there are now, now that we are in a virtual situation. Um, we expect you to mute your microphones throughout the presentation and put your questions in the chat when you have them. So now let's meet our uh, panelists. Alexa, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Alexa Todd. I am currently on FTC Team 5223, the JBOTS. This is my last year in FIRST. I have been in FIRST since third or fourth grade. I did FLL for six years, and I was on the, Nerd of the Nerds of the North for two years. Okay, Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Ives. I am the FTC judge advisor and uh, lead judge advisor um, for the state of Alaska. I'm a retired electrical engineer, and I've been uh, associated with FIRST uh, for nine years. Uh, than uh, judging at all levels of uh, first except FRC. And I'm uh, currently one of the engineering mentors for the Nerds of the North. Yeah, thank you. So now Lawton. Hi, I'm Lawton. Uh, I'm on FTC 3208, although historically we haven't done a whole lot of outreach. Um, I'm also president of the FRSC team who uh, does do a fair amount and we've uh, been recognized for some awards because of it, so we have a few opportunities um, we'd like to pass along. Yeah, thank you everybody. And now, why outreach? Uh, first wants uh, teams to do outreach because they uh, expect teams to promote the first concept to both the STEM community as well as the general public. And uh, this is a way of getting more people to join in first. Um, also, it um, allows the teams to promote themselves as well. Is there anything else? I can yeah. add on to it if you want. Um, <clears throat> I think that outreach also has a lot to do with like gracious professionalism because a lot of what my teams and other teams do is mentor each other. And so it's a way to collaborate and make sure everyone's doing their best and pass on knowledge about all we're doing and just make sure that everyone is competing at their best and help our community. Okay, so what are the judges are looking for in, out, in outreach? We are looking for teams that successfully recruit people from uh, outside the STEM community. Uh, we want to see them summarize their experiences and lessons they learned from doing outreach. Um, and um, they should be doing a collective effort to make FIRST known throughout their school and communities and speak to others to embrace the culture of FIRST. Um, judges are looking for everyone to take part in their presentation and engage with the judges. Um, the team should show a creative appro uh, approach to um, materials that market their team and they should be an ambassador of FIRST programs. Um, so how about creating a cohesive outreach plan? How can we do that? Yeah, so kind of going off what Steve was saying, it seems like one of the things that judges really value is not just a team doing a bunch of outreach, but having some kind of unified approach to how they want to go about outreach. Um, so I can tell you like early on my team, we just kind of volunteered for whatever we could find. So we did like a toy drive for um, kids in need and then we volunteered at a soup kitchen 
Um, and well, all those things are, are really good and really they do look good at judges. Um, having kind of just a cohesive plan of what your team is looking to accomplish with these things, I think is one thing that judges are valuing when they're analyzing your team. Um, so on the slide, I have what is the FRC, um, our mission statement to just kind of what we hope to accomplish through everything we've been doing as a team. Um, and so it's kind of three parts. The first one is this beginning. Our mission is to empower the uh, empower and inspire future generations of Alaskan engineers, chemists, biologists, architects, astrophysics, and leaders by extending expanding STEM opportunities through outreach and example. So this is just kind of like the broad vision of why we're a team and what we're hoping to do as a team. Um, and then also giving the little Alaskan plug, because especially if you travel out of state, um, being the Alaska FTC team or the Alaska FRC team um, is really cool to judges, I think. And then the next section is as part of our team mission, we believe that all Alaskan youth should have the opportunity to pursue STEM fields and join our team regardless of location, gender, or race. So this kind of solidifies what we hope to accomplish as a team and um, kind of alluding into what our targets are. So then in this last portion, we hope to achieve inclusion of all groups and add to the diversity of new ideas and encourage STEM education across the state of Alaska. So really emphasizing what we're doing and why we're doing it. And then all of the outreach we've done. So we've done um, a lot of stuff trying to recruit from diverse areas that could tie into this um, mission statement. Uh, we've had programs so teams from outside of Anchorage could attend, and that's what the bulk of this is discussing, talking about how regardless of geography, people are able to join our team. Um, and then obviously a lot of our outreach projects play into this and in hoping to expand STEM opportunities across Alaska. Um, so even if you don't have just as formal of a mission statement as this, having some vision of what your team is looking to pursue with outreach, um, and being sure to present that to the judges in such a way that they they understand that it's more than just signing up for every um, volunteer opportunity you're given. I agree with Lawton that uh, this is uh, one of the things that judges really look for is um, whole team um, participation in whatever outreach they decide to do. Uh, rather than having just one person say, I did 200 hours of, of outreach, we want to see the entire team uh, participate. So now that we're in like the pandemic and everybody's going virtual, how can we do like outreach during this time? Um, I can talk about this. Um, so far, it's been hard as I think it is for everyone. And we had a lot of plans this season to continue projects we had done last season and continue to go see different rural villages and help with their FLL teams. Obviously, that is not an option anymore. Um, but I think that there are still so many things that we can do with Zoom calls like this. Um, we are continuing to, I actually did a Zoom call this morning, um, helping to teach some teams the new FLL programming because they've completely changed the software for FLL. Um, so a lot of Zoom, I think just a lot of online teaching, presentations online. Um, it's, I don't yeah, I think it's going to be about a lot of like this, making videos, making, trying to recruit teams virtually, making online events that are fun and exciting, especially for FLL, because there are not a lot of FLL teams this season. Um, yeah, that's it. That's kind of what our plan is for the season. Yeah. I think that there's some creative ways that um, teams can approach this. Definitely take some out of the box thinking to come up with ideas. But I know like in FRC, one of the things we've come up with, well, one of them is like what you're seeing now, um, helping FTC teams uh, through the state, but then also 
just creative things like we have this project to store Legos and distribute them to FLL teams. Um, once again, kind of tying back to our mission statement. Um, and then actually this little plug for that, in fact, if you are interested in volunteering for that, um, it is, I guess, a, a bit of an outreach opportunity. I'll post something in the chat, which is a link of how you could sign up. Um, but yeah, I think finding creative ways like Alexa saying, especially over Zoom, um, you're, it's going to be different than what teams usually do for outreach, but it's definitely not to say it couldn't be done. And yeah, if you follow that link in the chat, there should be a little volunteer page at the top. And then you can fill out a little form and we can give you more info on it. And your thinking should not be confined within the state itself. You can uh, mentor and uh, uh, help throughout the, uh, just first as an international uh, program, you can find places all over the world where you can help. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And now, could we see a sample outreach documentation notebook? Um, yeah, I have mine right here, if you want me to start. Um, we actually have a second notebook that has all of our outreach in it. Um, yes, yeah, so let me just open up. We, and you can find more information about this on the first website and then some stuff about um, FTC, but we actually divide our outreach into three sections. So there's industry outreach, which are things like BP day, or we, I actually, I went with Steve last year to Oh, what was it? It was engineering firm and I can't remember the name. Anyway, going to like businesses and presenting, um, community outreach, um, going to elementary schools and presenting or the reading rendezvous, um, UA STEM day, we put that under community and then first outreach. So this is promoting first, volunteering at first events, mentoring first teams, um, presenting anything that you do that is kind of spreading first, we kind of we put under there. Um, and we also sorry, made a map that shows kind of, oh, I'll just do this. Oh, okay, there we go. That the red if you can kind of see this, red is industry outreach, green is community, and blue is first. Actually, I think green is first, and blue is community. So the, I like I, we just thought this map was really cool because it kind of shows how kind of where our outreach is spreading across the straight the state. And then we have industry outreach. So BP day. Um, Alaska Communications, I did a presentation with um, Steve at Alaska Communications. Um, a th a outreach event we did with Vicki. Um, oh, here it is. Dowell, Dowell Engineering, that's what I did with Steve. And so lots of pictures, we put any sort of communication we have, an explanation of the event, and I'll flip to like, okay, so here, we have a certificate that we got from the um, Cuspic School District for volunteering in Antioch. Then in our first outreach, it's just, just put lots of pictures, logos, emails, drawings. We have letters from kids that we volunteered with. Um, so with the outreach section, we really like to have fun because this is like, to me, one of the most fun sections to make and to do because you're, you can look at all of the people that you connected with, that you helped, all of the kids you mentored. Um, there's Coach Elaine with, 
I don't know what that is. Glasses with eyeballs shooting out. So yeah, so that's kind of some of our outreach documentation. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll start screen sharing again. So um, are there any questions? Okay, so you have uh, one question. It is uh, how will judging for outreach change from previous seasons and how and like what will judges be emphasizing this year? That's uh, an interesting question, and it's one that uh, we aren't really sure of. Um, since this is going to be virtual this year, uh, uh, you will need to submit your engineering portfolios, which will have um, pieces of your outreach in it. Uh, and the judges will look at that. And then what the judges will probably do is um, ask to see your electronic copy of your entire engineering notebook to get further details out of it. And that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, so when you're doing your engineering portfolio, that's kind of like a resume of your team. So you need to take and put in there um, those issue areas where you're going to want the uh, judges to pay particular attention um, to your engineering notebook. Uh, the, uh, we're going to, uh, we're, the lead judges are going to be having a meeting next week and um, we're going to be discussing the software repository for engineering notebooks so that the judges can access them. And I'll have more information after that meeting. So hopefully that's answered your question. Um, okay, so we have another question that is, is there any deadline dates yet? Not that I know of. Uh, here, I'll weigh in there. So we don't have any tournament dates set yet. So we don't have any deadline dates set yet. Um, but we're going to be looking at that pretty soon. It's, uh, it's a weird season, and we have teams that are still registering. In fact, I got an email today from a team in Fairbanks that I didn't know was uh, – hang on um, – did, that I didn't know was meeting. So. Um, teams are popping up as we speak. So just a second. Stop. <laughs> John can't stand it. He's crinkling things. Sorry about that. Um, so once we have tournament dates set up, then we can we can work the rest of that. We're looking at probably February, um, March, uh, but we'll be working with coaches on on that. We're going to come up with tournaments and dates that make sense. Um, Um, so is there any other questions? Uh, can I uh, can I pop in here for a second on uh, some outreach opportunities and and mm -hmm. uh, sort of a perspective from a regional um, give you a regional perspective on that? Yeah, definitely. So there are new first Lego League teams that are popping up. What's happening is that schools are not doing teams, um, but parents are starting teams on the side with their kids. So a number of them don't have experience, some of them do, and they're gonna be looking for help. Um, 
So a couple of things. One is there is a mentor network. I don't know if you guys have noticed, seen that uh, in the Team Blasts. I'm going to post that in the chat. You can go and sign up as either a mentor or as um, a team that would like a mentor. And so the mentor network would be a good place to go. Um, and that could connect you with a team and it, and it wouldn't necessarily need to be an Alaskan team, but it, it could be. I have not um, delved into that to see exactly how well that works. Another thing though is on our web page, the FLL um, on the First in Alaska web page, I'm putting resources on there. And we've had a couple of teams that have mentioned that they are interested in helping FLL teams and doing you know office hours or being a mentor or whatever. And uh, I know some, some coaches that would be eager for some assistance. And the caveat there is that some things have changed. So like Alexa had said, she was helping with the new programming software. Um, if a team wants to help, that's great. They need to be aware that there is new software. Some teams are not gonna be using that. Some teams are gonna be using the old software, but you need to be aware that there's a new one so you don't confuse a brand new coach because that would be like, that would be uh, anti-helpful if you confuse them by not having the, the same program in your head. Um, you know, judging has changed, some other things have changed. So before um, I list you on the website of the team that wants to be a resource for FLL teams, we would need to talk and make sure that you're up to speed on some changes and things like that. But um, I'm happy to put an FTC team up there that wants to be a resource. We'd have to communicate about what, what you want to provide and that kind of thing. Um, we're also talking about doing some FLL coach training and we might be able to loop some teams in for some of that stuff as well. Uh, there are also some FTC teams that I'm hoping that are going to start some rural teams. Um, haven't quite gotten completely there yet, but I think it's happening. Uh, that can happen this year because it's remote. And they may very well like to have somebody alongside them. So if you're interested in mentoring or, you know, being a, a source of, you know, the Shell Answer Man for an FTC team that's getting to go, uh, getting going, you know, let me know and we can connect you with them maybe too. So things like that. And then the other thing I would say is just be thinking, how can I promote this program in a way that's different than what we've done before? Because obviously what we've done before is we, we run a tournament and we go to the tournament and all these normal things in our normal world, which we don't have this year. Um, but did your elementary school have an FLL team? Does it now or, or has, has it in pre re recent years? If not, um, do you have some ideas on how you could promote it? Maybe not for this year, but could you come up with some ideas for promoting it in the future? Um, you know, just be thinking creatively about maybe not necessarily getting teams started this year, but how could we get teams started next year? So there, there we go. There's, there are my thoughts. And if you want any more other thoughts, reach out to me. Thank you very much, Allison. Um, so just one final call for any, if there's any other things, either the panelists would like to add or if there's any questions that you would like to ask. Um, if not, then thank you very much for joining this FTC workshop. Um, there are two upcoming workshops and that will be on November 18th, there will be a film and video workshop. And then on December the 2nd, there will be a control award and programming because control award was promoted this year. So hopefully we'll see you then. Joining of the